Hello and welcome back to Information Technology Fundamentals. We're going to be reviewing using software applications in this lecture. In particular, we're going to look at installing and uninstalling software applications and how we can configure compatibility settings if we need to. We're going to look at the importance of software licensing and the different types of licenses uh, that are available. And we're going to look at key features of different types of applications and their associated file formats. To start with, let's look at installing applications. Um, we might uh, call it an application. Frequently, they're called apps. They're technically software. They could be called any of those three things. Uh, but generally, software uh, is going to come with a, in Windows environment an .exe file, which you're going to click on, and it's going to begin the installation process. Now, before we get that far, we want to verify a couple of things about the software we're going to install. One, is it compatible with our operating system? Does our hardware meet the system, the bare system requirements for the uh, software we're going to install? Are there special instructions that go along with it? Uh, maybe there's another piece of hardware. So if you're using a, a CAD cam or installing something like that, maybe you need to have a uh, stylus to work with. And what kind of licensing uh, is going to be in effect for this application? And does our business or organization have multiple licenses? And how are we tracking that? So if we're installing a uh, desktop application, generally you're going to have an .exe file. You're going to double click on it and it's going to run. You should get the user account control dialog box like you see here. should pop up and ask you if you want to actually allow this to happen. Now we want to allow this to happen uh, if we indeed are intending to set up the program. If you get this user account control window and you did not uh, attempt to install software, you're going to answer no. If you decide to use the Microsoft Store to get an app and run it, it's a little bit different than a standalone application. So any app that we purchase and install from the store is going to run in something called a sandbox, which means it is separated from the rest of the computer and there is very little to no chance that it could damage or otherwise um, uh, affect our computer in a negative way. Standard user can install store apps, whereas a standalone application, you need to have administrative pr uh, privileges. Now, there's a lot of uh, programs that have been designed for Windows over the years, as Windows has been around for quite a while. Uh, if you have a program that needs to run on an older version of Windows, uh, Windows 10 and actually Windows 7, 8 and 7 also have this ability. They allow you to run it in an, as if you're running an older version of Windows. So here on the screen, you can see it right here, it says compatibility mode and it says run this program in compatibility mode for, and right now it has Windows 8, but there are a whole bunch of settings in there. So you could choose 7, XP, Service Pack 3 and some other things. So if you had a older, as we like to say, legacy program that you still need to use, you can have it run in a compatibility mode. We also have some settings down here where we can um, change the color mode or the screen resolutions and some other things to make it work on our computer. Well, if our program is giving us a problem or if we want to uninstall it, we can go to the control panel and go to programs and features. And there you'll see a list of all the programs on the computer. Now you can sort them by name, publisher, installed on date, uh, uh, as well as size and version uh, if you're having trouble locating the program you want to uninstall. Generally, you select the program and then up here at the top, you'll get the, the uh, buttons for uninstall, change, or repair. Some programs will have a repair option uh, that you can use, uh, Microsoft Office notably does. So if you're having problems with it, you can try and run a repair before you uninstall it. Windows also has a feature list that you can turn on and off. There's a couple of ways to get to it. Uh, if we look back on the previous screen, you can see that on the left side it says turn Windows features on and off. 
or you can do a quick search, use the search button down at the bottom and locate this as well. And here you would check or uncheck different Windows features you want to turn on or off. Uh, many of them require, will require a reboot if you turn some of these features on. A major concern for businesses is uh, software licensing. And that's because uh, a business can be fined and get themselves in trouble if they are using software that's not properly licensed. So with that, businesses uh, should be tracking how many licenses they have, who has it, uh, what type of license it is. So with each license, we get something called an end user license agreement. Uh, you should read through them as a good practice, although I think most people tend to just click by them. Now, uh, uh, software is going to come either as a single-use license, a group license, concurrent license, or client access licenses. A single-use license is just what it sounds like. You buy it, usually you get a product key or product ID, and it's installed on one or maybe two computers. A group use or site license will be for a particular group of computers and they'll all use the same license number uh, and there'll be a number of um, users that use that license. Now the group or site license may have something called a concurrent license where maybe we have a uh, hundred people on our uh, have the program but only 10 of them can use it at once. That's uh, pretty useful for software that's used occasionally and not everyone has to have access it uh, each time they are on the computer or network. A client access license is a site license with a large for a large number of computers. These computers are usually networked and the software is brought under that is bought under the license can be installed onto the network server so that all authorized users on the network can access it without it being installed on each individual computer. That is called a client access license. Registration is the process where the software is installed, you have a key, and then you register it so you get uh, updates. It's really getting becoming part of a mailing list and the company knows who has the software. Software is being sold now as subscription services as well. Uh, Adobe Creative Cloud is a classic example of that, which means instead of paying six or seven hundred dollars up front, you are paying twenty or thirty dollars a month. In return, you get constantly updated versions, and you don't ever have to go back and get a CD or a disc or download something. It keeps itself updated as you go. There are three other types of licenses we should talk about, which is shareware, freeware, and open source. So shareware is software that you install free of charge and you can use it usually for 30 or 60 days as an evaluation period. Freeware is software that is available free of charge. Uh, it never is going to cost you anything. However, the downside to it, to it is it may not be updated frequently. Open source software uh, is a programs that make their code available and allow people to modify it. Linux is a classic example of that, where the manufacturers get the program code for Linux and then they go ahead and make their own uh, distribution copy of it with the tools and features they want to have available in it. Productivity software is going to be anything that helps us get work done on our computer. Uh, the classic things we use right now are going to be web browsers. So we've got uh, Firefox, Chrome, uh, Microsoft Edge, Safari, and others. Word processing software and spreadsheets and presentations are going to par be part of Office suites. So in Microsoft, we've got uh, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Google has docs, sheets, and slides. And then we have another uh, set of programs called Visual Diagramming. Microsoft version is Visio, and that's for setting up different types of diagrams, such as org charts, or in uh, the networking world, network diagrams.
Collaboration software is going to be software that allow people to work together to get something done. Uh, we might be able to throw email in there. There's also some other uh, personal information managers such as OneNote and Evernote that fall into this category as well. Uh, collaboration software frequently has online work uh, spaces for documents. So for example, Google Doc as you see pictured here on the slide, allows multiple people to work in it uh, at the same time. Microsoft's Office 365 also has that ability. Also, collaboration software could include instant messaging, uh, VoIP, and uh, things called telepresence. Uh, here we have an example of, uh, I think that's a menu from Skype. And, and of course, in there, in order to use the video conferencing, you have to have... Uh, a microphone and audio, usually at the very least, although many of them, many of the video conferences also support phone access. Some other types of business software would be desktop publishing. The Adobe Creative Cloud Suite has many of those uh, tools in it, along with uh, some other graphic designs. So for digitally manipulating images and video, those uh, programs all fall into that category. Uh, Computer-aided design, which would be CAD, that's making uh, drawings or blueprints. It could be for a building or it could be for individual components. So maybe we're making, we're manufacturing some type of part we may use computer-aided design to create it. Project management software. Uh, in Microsoft World, it's called Project. Uh, usually this is pretty specialized software uh, for companies that do large projects and need to track them. We have accounting, lots of examples of accounting software. Uh, some of it's online now entirely and some of it still is standalone. And of course, database software, every computer uses uh, plenty of uh, different types of database. Uh, in a later on module, we're going to dive into database more specifically. And then businesses may have their own specific uh, uh, or proprietary software that they need to use in their business. So as a review, we looked at how to install and uninstall software applications and how to configure the compatibility settings. We looked at software licensing and we described the key features of different types of applications and their file formats.